Welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Grace Egan, Executive Director of the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. The Foundation's mission is to enable seniors to live with independence and dignity in their communities. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging to provide information and resources to boomers, seniors, and caregivers. In 2012, the New Jersey Foundation for Aging released a study on the cost of living for seniors across New Jersey. The New Jersey Elder Index report indicates that 25% of all New Jersey seniors have difficulty covering their basic monthly expenses. Oftentimes, community programs can be an important difference whether someone can pick up their prescription or cover their utility bill. So today, we're going to discuss community-based food and nutrition programs. These programs can improve the quality of life for a senior by providing access to food and also provide a cash benefit, allowing the senior to utilize their income to cover their basic living expenses. Our guests today include Adele LaTourette, Director of the New Jersey Anti-Hunger Coalition, and Melissa Briggs, New Jersey Department of Health Program Manager for the Food Delivery Services. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate both of you joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adele, I, I think maybe you want to tell us what the Anti-Hunger Coalition is about before sure. we get into the programs. Absolutely. The New Jersey Anti-Hunger Coalition is a program of the Center for Food Action in New Jersey. We've been around since 1980, and we basically grew out of the desire to move emergency food pantries beyond providing emergency food and start mm. to work on hunger at a policy level where you can really address some of the root causes and and really work to improve federal feeding programs like SNAP, food stamps, um, WIC, um, any number of mm -hmm. you know, school breakfast, really any number of programs that serve hungry people in New Jersey. Yeah, I know you've done a lot of work on this, this school breakfast and lunch we program. Have. Have. Um, but I know today we really wanted to talk about SNAP. Um, so why don't you say what SNAP really stands for? SNAP is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. um, people know it as the Food Stamp Program. Mm -hmm. They did formally change their name, and New Jersey followed suit in changing the name of the program. But it is basically the exact same program. So it's food stamps. It's been around a long a time. It's been around a very long time. Um, and it really is the nation's frontline defense against hunger. We need to tell our viewers how they can apply and what they're eligible for, so let's give them some I details. I think the most important thing to know about the SNAP program in New Jersey and really everywhere else, uh, in New Jersey you can apply online, and through that site you can apply for SNAP, you can apply for general assistance, you can apply for a variety of programs. It pre-screens you and also mm -hmm. really takes a look at your eligibility. The most important thing for people to know is that the sooner they go online and do that, the sooner the clock starts ticking for their benefits to, to go into effect. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really a pretty simple process. They will have to follow up and go into the office, which is a very important thing to know. You can't just file the application online and never expect to actually deal with the office. Um, they can actually set up an interview over the phone, mm -hmm. but you will have to submit a variety of paperwork. Um, so it's not just a, you know, Right. Let's Super talk easy. about the documentation. The, um, what what would they really need to provide? The, the things you need to show are who you are. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a driver's license or a birth certificate, where you live. So, proof of mortgage, proof of rent, um, proof of income earned or unearned. So, your Social Security award letter. Um, you know, whatever kind of income there is. Uh, bank statements. Utility bills. It's important also to know that you should never leave your original documentation at the office. Mm -hmm. You should always make copies, if possible, at a community agency. One of the good tips for people to know is if they call their food bank, there are a lot of people who are out there doing outreach and filling out applications, helping people fill out applications, which is a really good way to do it because it's a complicated process, mm -hmm. and it's good to have somebody kind of holding your hand through it. Right, and explaining the importance of bringing in that Social Security award letter. That's right, you know? exactly. You have to, right. if you don't provide the verifications, your application is not going to get processed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we, some, from our work on the New Jersey Elder Index, we know that sometimes the, the average Social Security for a woman in New Jersey is $14,848. So I guess the question might be, would somebody getting the average be perhaps eligible for SNAP? 
I believe so. The income levels are 185% of poverty. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have some of the actual numbers of what that equals to mm -hmm. on, a, on an on annual screen. basis. Mm -hmm. But the important thing, I think, particularly for the senior community to know, is that there is no asset qualification in the SNAP program in New Jersey, which means you can own a home. Right. And you can have a retirement account. And these are things that people want to be able to preserve. You can have a vehicle. Um, it's very important for people to understand that because that's a kind of recent change and I think people have some preconceptions about how the SNAP program works. And seniors can have a few other deductions if I remember correctly. They can. The most important deduction for seniors to really focus on is the medical deduction. Mm -hmm. um, seniors can take medical deductions and for seniors that can mean anywhere, that can mean anything from Doctors, costs for doctors, costs for dentures, costs for eyeglasses, most of which are not covered. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they can kind of prorate that to a monthly basis, the, the SNAP, people who administer the SNAP program. So it's very important to document these. Um, if you can actually get a prescription for things like aspirin, th over-the-counter things mm -hmm. that you need that the doctor says that you need to take, it's very important to maximize your benefits. Because mm -hmm. these are out-of-pocket expenses. Right. What about their, their housing costs? Their housing costs, they can take. They have to prove that when they go okay. in. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's, it's, a ca it's a complex calculation as to how they do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to start throwing out numbers because right. it's just too complex for me to keep up with. It's difficult for the SNAP workers to keep up with, all the changing regulations. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the most important thing is for people to go and bring proof of their rent and their mortgage. Right. And we always suggest that, you know, if you want to know where to apply for for SNAP or you want to know about services, we always suggest that people call their county office on aging. And so we will also have those numbers. But so when someone applies and they are deemed eligible, how do they get their benefits? They get their benefits on a card and it's called an electronic benefit transfer card. Um, in New Jersey, it's called a family's first card. And it's not, it's no longer a paper coupon. So it's not like they're going up to the register and actually, you know, presenting a paper coupon. Um, it's a card. It's just like a bank card. and they oh, Like go a and debit they card? It. It's just like a debit card, and okay. they go and they swipe it. And the money comes right out of their SNAP account. And what can they purchase with it, an EBT card? The most important thing to know is that you cannot purchase prepared foods. You cannot purchase mm. any kind of personal items. You can't purchase soap. You can't purchase detergent. toothpaste or detergent or anything like mm -hmm. that. It really has to be food products, and that's, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's important. I think, you know, when we're trying to help someone uh, manage their budget, I think, you know, knowing how you can pay for your, your food is very important. And also that they know that there's some documentation that can help someone understand uh, what their other expenses are for yeah. the month. So I think that's very important. Um, and so, you know, it just seems to me that sometimes people say, well, I will, maybe I'd only be eligible for the minimum. And so when we do presentations to seniors, um, we know the minimum is sixteen dollars mm -hmm. um, a month, but as you said, when somebody starts that application process, they're getting the ball rolling. That's so right. So if it takes a little bit of time, which it does, to get SNAP approval, if it takes three months, and they're only eligible for the minimum, then they can have three months of sixteen dollars, which is on that EBT card. Yeah. And then, um, but we're told that the average. Uh, SNAP benefit is much higher than that, you know, somewhere between 80 to $150. But I think it's good for someone to figure out what they're eligible for. They may. I think that's true. Mm -hmm. I also think it's important to note that regula regulations say that SNAP applications should take 30 days. Just so people have some idea okay. of really how it should work, that's not saying that it necessarily works that way, but regulatory that's, that's the way it should work. Mm -hmm. And if you're in emergent circumstances, if you're homeless, um, mm -hmm. or if your monthly income exceeds what your monthly expenses are, I'm sorry, your monthly expenses exceed what your monthly income is, you're eligible for expedited services oh. for SNAP, mm -hmm. um, which is seven days. So again, people should keep that in mind, right. but the most important thing, generally speaking, is to start that application process. Mm -hmm. And I know um, during Sandy, they had what they called D-SNAP, which was disaster right. SNAP. And so, as you say, I think it's always wise for people to call up and figure out what they might be, mm -hmm. um, might be eligible for. Yeah. So um, I think it's um, a good thing for people to call their county office on aging, and usually it's the county boards of social services 
uh, that really do the processing for SNAP. That's right. But you also mentioned a pilot program, I think the food There's bank. a pilot outreach program, and the food banks all across the state actually have teams of outreach workers who go out and help people fill out applications. Now, that doesn't mean that if you call them, they will come to your house. Mm -hmm. What it means is that they have set locations that they'll be going to, and you may be able to go to those locations and fill, help, you know, they will help you fill out an application. But mm -hmm. they will not come to your house to do that. That's a very important thing to know. And are there six food banks in New Jersey? I'm there are really six sure. food banks. Um, the largest probably that covers the most, 18 of the 21 counties, is the Community Food Bank out of Hillside. Mm -hmm. um, so that would probably be the best place to start. Um, to really try and get a handle on where the outreach workers are going to be and if you might be able to go and mm -hmm. be helped by them. Is there a number if someone wanted to know where the pilot programs are or should they just call their food bank and ask? The food bank is definitely the best way to go. Okay, because I know there's the Monmouth Food Bank. and There's the Monmouth and Ocean Food Bank. Mm -hmm. There's the Food Bank of South Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Community Food Bank branch down in Atlanta County. Mm -hmm. There's Norwest Cap, which is up in the True. northwestern mm -hmm. part of the state. So there are a variety. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, again, I think we just want to make sure we're connecting people with food and nutrition programs. There are some others. I mean, we know if someone's homebound, they can apply for Meals on Wheels. There are congregate nutrition sites. We've talked about them on previous shows. Um, but I'm very happy that Melissa's here to talk about the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, which I always call by the wrong name. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. So I'm happy that you're here, too, to tell us about the program. Okay. Um, well, for the program, the purpose of the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program mm -hmm. is to provide unprepared, locally grown, fresh fruits, vegetables, and herbs for the nutritional health of our senior citizens. There's another goal of the program, and that is to help people become more aware and use our local farmers markets more often. Mm. Um, Farm fresh. Farm fresh, yes. Uh, the season operates every year in New Jersey from June 1st to October 31st. Mm -hmm. And when a senior is found eligible, they will be given a list of the eligible fruits and vegetables, as well as a list of the uh, authorized farmers and locations of their farmer markets in their home county and neighboring counties. So can I ask, what I didn't think a vegetable or a fruit could be ineligible. Th there I'm are just there curious. are some there what, are some what would it uh, and I, I didn't bring the whole list with okay. me and I, I don't have it committed to memory okay. but there are a few uh, one that I can think of is bananas we're talking about oh. locally well, grown it's not grown in New Jersey yeah, locally grown fresh I fruits and think. vegetables okay but people do want to buy bananas sometimes but sure. that's not eligible right it's presumably also not at your farmers market stand I would mm -hmm. think but you never can tell so how many farmers participate in New Jersey? Well, this season, New Jersey has approximately 215 authorized farmers operating oh. throughout the, the season, oh. throughout the year. Now, New Jersey does not authorize the farmers markets, but I can share with you that approximately 138 farmers markets are operating this season. Hmm. So. Um, we do like to increase the number of farmers that mm -hmm. are participating in the program. So if there are any farmers that have at least five acres of land in production with fruits and vegetables, I encourage you to think about becoming a authorized farmer vendor and mm -hmm. contact our office mm -hmm. at 609-292-9560 uh, mm -hmm. and ask to speak with Janet Prester and she can give you more information mm -hmm. about that. Well, I do hope we have some farmers watching, so that yes. would always be good. Yes. Um, and how is someone eligible? Um, well, we basically uh, would screen eligibility, and a person would need to be at least 60 years of age or older and at or below 185% of the federal income guidelines. Mm -hmm. Where do they apply? I'm For happy the most to, part. Okay. I'm happy to say that um, all of the counties are participating in New Jersey this year. Great. And so for the most part, um, the, it's the local county office of aging that implements the program for us. So the, the senior could contact the office on aging mm -hmm. and they would then be screened for eligibility. And if they are eligible, then they would be given their checks um, and some other program information mm -hmm. such as um, nutritional tips and the authorized farmer list that I spoke about earlier. Mm -hmm. So while Adele is talking about an EBT card, you're actually talking about something that's 
paper and in their hands. Yes, the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program is still operating on a paper check system. Hmm. There is hope down the road, uh, but many years in the future of it becoming on an EBT card as Adele spoke of. Mm -hmm. But right now we're still operating with paper checks. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think it depends. I think some of the seniors might actually feel more comfortable with a paper mm -hmm. check, but I think um, going forward, People are becoming more familiar with what an EBT card is, yeah. and um, it's kind of nice when you go to a regular cashier at a supermarket that you're not, if, I mean, my, my memory serves me right, they used to be like ripping them out of a mm -hmm. book, right. and so this mm -hmm. is nice to, you can look like every other shopper exactly. and use your EBT card. Um, how would someone know if the farmer at their farmer's market would take uh, their checks. Good question. Okay. After the senior has received their checks, mm -hmm. one, they're going to be given the list of authorized farmers in, mm -hmm. in their neighboring and home counties so they can check that list. But all farmers that are participating in our program have to display signs that they are that they oh. are authorized. So they're going to be looking for that sign when they go to the farmer. And they can visit the farmer at the farmer's roadside stand or at a farmer's market that's operating in their town or in their county. Hmm. Well, it sounds like you have more farmers than you have farmer's markets, so I'm guessing that farmers might participate in several farmer's markets. Th they could or hmm. participate in none. It depends on the hmm. farmer's preference. Mm -hmm. um, and some farmers in with the Senior Farmer's Market Nutrition Program have also made arrangements in their county. They will even go to sites such as a senior center or to a senior citizen's uh, housing complex hmm. to make those fruits and vegetables available to the seniors so they don't have to travel far. It's very interesting, as I said, the difference between an EBT card and checks. Um, so is there um, something else you want to share with folks about how they can utilize the checks? Yes. Um, when a senior is out shopping for their locally grown fresh fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. at either a farm stand or a farmer's market, they can look for the Jersey Fresh logo oh. on, on the fruits and vegetables. But if they're still not clear about what fruits and vegetables are eligible, they can ask the farmer for clarification because he's been trained or he or she has been trained on the program and what's eligible. Mm. An important thing for seniors to know with this program is that the farmers cannot make change. So, oh, if the, yes. that's true. I forgot about so that. So they, they receive four or five dollar checks for use during the season. Stop for a second. So a senior gets four five, five dollar checks. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, a senior gets four or five dollar checks mm -hmm. for use during the season. So if their total for their purchase would be $12, they could mm -hmm. use two of their $5 checks mm -hmm. to pay for their purchase, and then the remaining $2 they could pay for in cash, or if the farmer accepts SNAP, they could also use their SNAP card to pay for the remaining $2. Mm -hmm. But it's important to know that the farmers cannot give change. Right. I do think that's important. Mm -hmm. I had forgotten about that, and I think you're right. If someone has the change in their pocket, they can meaning they could make mm -hmm. up the $2 difference or SNAP. And do many farmers markets accept SNAP? Some do, not all. Mm -hmm. um, it's, we're working on trying to get more farmers markets that accept SNAP, so that's mm -hmm. an important thing. If, in fact, they're, they want to use their SNAP card, they should know ahead of time whether or not the farmer accepts SNAP. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think that's, again, it's nice mm -hmm. to see that the two programs can work together. Yeah, I think it's very important to note that you can receive both programs. Mm -hmm. that Absolutely. Because you receive SNAP doesn't mean you can't receive Farmers Market Nutrition Program mm -hmm. and vice mm -hmm. versa. And so let's talk about how the programs are funded. How is the Farmers Market Senior Farmers Market program. The Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, it's a discretionary program and it's 100% federally funded. Mm -hmm. So in New Jersey, we are usually funded at the same level as the prior year unless there's been a change in the federal budget. Mm -hmm. Now, if that happens as it did this year, then all the states that are participating in the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program would receive a slight decrease in their budget. Mm -hmm. Now, we uh, each year um, request an expansion of funds from USDA. Mm -hmm. However, our final budget depends on what is determined in the federal budget. Okay, so when you say USDA, you mean the United States Department of Agriculture. Correct. And so you're saying that the funds really come from the federal budget. That is correct. 90% mm -hmm. of our budget is allocated for food dollars, and the remaining 10% is allocated for administrative costs, such mm -hmm. as salary and banking costs and printing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And printing, yeah. Um, so I think it's just very interesting, the idea that you act actually have to print your own 
checks as well. Mm -hmm. So someone has to cover that. And how is SNAP? SNAP is also funded? a federal program. Mm -hmm. um, and SNAP is not discretionary. It's actually an entitlement program, which basically means that however many people need SNAP, mm -hmm. they can be served. There's no cap on the budget of what the SNAP program will cost the state or the feds, mm -hmm. which is very important. It is important. Um, and it's important to keep that thing in place. I think what we're seeing now is the, the uh, SNAP program is funded through the Farm Bill, because mm -hmm. um, really it started out as a farm program, mm -hmm. interestingly enough, mm -hmm. and it's a, it was a way to subsidize farmers. So we're going through that process now of actually getting the program reauthorized under the Farm Bill. Mm -hmm. And the Farm Bill also addresses? Senior Farmers Senior Market Nutrition Farmers Program. program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yes, somehow or another, I just can't wrap my tongue around the whole title of the program. <laughs> it's a long name. Sorry. <laughs> SNAP is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the other thing, I think Adele touched on it, the idea that you could be eligible for both. And you could also take advantage of um, a, a congregate nutrition site. Um, I think that's important. Or if you happen to be homebound for a period of time, you could also get Meals on Wheels. Um, as I said, you know, the report that we did really showed not only that 25% of New Jersey seniors couldn't um, cover their basic expenses, but 43% of the people that are single or living in elder couple households have difficulty. So when we did our report, we, f we um, projected that if somebody participated in SNAP and somebody participated in the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, as well as maybe a congregate meal site, um, that they would probably have an additional $1,200 mm -hmm. because they would be participating um, with the meal program five days a week. They would have the SNAP benefit and the, the summer uh, farmer's market mm -hmm. program. And we think that's an important benefit. I think it's really important for people to understand that the SNAP program was never intended to actually pay for groceries throughout the month. Most people's SNAP benefits mm -hmm. last about two weeks out of the month. So I think piecing together all the programs that you can mm -hmm. so that you remain healthy and fed all through the month is a very important thing to do. Mm -hmm. So there is a nice blend when you think about it. And, um, and that's why we want to suggest that seniors and caregivers contact their county offices on aging yes. to get a sense of their eligibility, to get a sense of how they might uh, put a service package together. Um, because they want to be able to pay their utilities and they mm -hmm. want to be able to pay for their rent, um, but they also need to have food. The food, I, I'm sure there's an absolute correlation with quality of life and nutritional benefits. Do you see that, Melissa? That's one of our, our goals that we look at with the Department of Health all the time. Mm -hmm. So increasing someone's nutritional health has so many benefits, uh, especially with seniors who mm -hmm. may already be nutritionally compromised mm -hmm. and also medically compromised. So anything to increase the nutritional health and overall health of a person, it, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's really wonderful to be able to, to talk about this. Um, also, when someone goes to the County Office on Aging, they can find out about other programs. They can find out about utility assistance and a variety of other programs, their pharmaceutical assistance. So um, when you think about what the overall package is, it can really be very helpful for someone living on the edge of, of poverty. Yes. I think it's also important for people to know, particularly seniors, because I think they have a sense that if they get SNAP, they're taking it away from somebody else. And that is not absolutely the not the case. If they're eligible, again, it's an entitlement program. Everyone who's eligible can get access to the program. Um, but also, it's not a welfare program. It was put in place to really make sure that people get fed adequately. And I think it's so important for people to know that. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, so often people say, oh, I don't need that. But in reality, it can make an incredible difference. And so we mm -hmm. really want people to encourage them to look online. You can go to NewJerseyHelps.org. And they can also call your office at? They can call our office in Trenton at 609-292-9560. And again, they can ask for Dorothy Nugamese, Janet Prester, or myself. We can answer any of their questions mm -hmm. or refer them to the appropriate county agency that would be implementing the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. And again, the local offices of aging provide so much information. So mm -hmm. they might be just contacting that agency for SNAP but they're, or Senior Farmers Market, but they're going to get other information as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I do think that um, today's program hopefully has really um, provided some resources for some of our viewers. We're very happy to hear from our viewers, and so who knows, they may have some suggestions in the future. Um, I'd really like to thank you both for coming. 
I think Thank um, Thank you. that there's a world of information here, and we really want to try to get as much out there as possible. Aging Insights is produced by the New Jersey Foundation for Aging. To make donations to the foundation or to sponsor Aging Insights programs, feel free to go to our website at www.njfoundationforaging.org or you can call our offices at 609-421-0206. And while you're on our website, please take a moment to fill out an online survey about Aging Insights. Feel free to provide comments about this show or other topics that we should offer in the future. We will always want to remind our viewers to find out about senior services in your area, please contact your county offices on aging, also known as the Aging and Disability Resource Connection in your county. You'll see a listing of their numbers on our website, or you may call the state hotline number, which is 1-877-222-3737. Thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights. And remember, aging is everyone's business.